Hello and welcome to Best Fun Life Reviews. My name is Jason. Today I, you join me on what must be said as a beautiful winter's morning with barely a cloud in the sky. With me today I also have these really nice little Canon 10x30 image stabilization monitors. Now obviously we can't um, go anywhere without uh, mentioning their uh, main feature and unique selling point is the actual image stabilization. Uh, the way this, what, what it actually does is um, help to stabilize and, and in most cases and often most cases completely eliminate any sort of um, image shake that you get whilst viewing the binoculars, looking through the binoculars. Um, the way this works is inside the binoculars you have um, a couple of sensors as well as a microprocessor which um, with the press of a button um, automatically detect any horizontal or vertical movement and what they do is they um, uh, instantly um, change the um, direction of the refracted light that comes in through the prism um, to keep the image um, as still as possible. Do they work? Uh, absolutely. Um, before I ever tried these I probably like a lot of people out there were a little skeptical and thought maybe they were just a gimmick. Um, but you know if, if I put these for example to my eyes and I shake my hands about just a little and I press the press the button on the top um, the image all, all, um, instantly becomes far more steadier. Now the traditional way of um, making a view through a pair of binoculars uh, steady would be obviously to put it onto a tripod and quite rightly there'll be a lot of you out there saying well you know I have a pair of 10 times magnification binoculars and I use them without a tripod and it's quite fine and you'd be quite right in saying that. Um, most people, unless you're going to be viewing something over a really long period of time, um, wouldn't need a tripod with a 10 times magnification binocular. Um, image stabilization and image shake become a real problem as your magnification increases. Um, and you know, generally, you only really need to start thinking about tripods when you get to you know magnifications of say 15 plus, something like that. Um, I guess with these um, Canon. They do make much more powerful versions than these. Um, kind of figured that, um, you know, why not put it into a, a 10 times magnification binocular just to make them even better than a standard binocular, if you were like. Um, so yeah, um, it's a feature that for most people um, is nice to have, but um, may not be actually es essential. There are a few possible exceptions to that, um, and some some that sort of spring to mind would be someone who has. Um, shaky hands for example um, these may be well worth looking at if, if you have particularly unsteady hands um, other sort of uh, thoughts would be people that are going to be observing things over a long period of time um, and I've actually tried this if you um, are looking at something you know I'm thinking of you know you know like over an hour or something like that your eyes can become quite tired um, with just, just adjusting to little movements all the time if you were to have these and, and be holding down your the image stabilization, um, it would actually really help you um, in this regard. Um, other thoughts would be um, obviously using these binoculars on a moving platform. I don't know if you've ever tried um, walking or um, with a binocular to your face. You, you know, it makes it almost impossible to see. So if you, um, uh, you know, I'm thinking of using these binoculars, something like on safari, for example, um, from a, a moving vehicle, um, you'd be able to look at game. Um, really, would be a good idea. The other obvious use would be on on uh, for a marine use on a boat or a yacht, for example, um, where. Um, you're constantly moving up and down. Um, having a, a pair of image stabilization binoculars would definitely help you. What, what makes me not uh, recommend these as the ultimate marine binocular is the fact that they're not waterproof, um, which is a sort of a shame. Um, so 
so you know if you were worried about getting them wet or dropping them overboard these these possibly won't be the right thing to have on your boat on your boat uh, a thing to mention though is um canon um they're, they're larger versions of these are you know they do have all weather versions which are actually waterproof so if you did like the idea of them um, and you still wanted to use them as marine binoculars possibly go for the bigger um, all weather versions which are, are actually waterproof um, I'm not quite sure why Canon uh, decided not to make these completely waterproof um, possibly I imagine the added complexity of uh, making an electronic device completely waterproof um, you know just trying to keep costs down or something like that as a guess um, yeah, so what else to say about these binoculars? Um, the quality of the, the view through, the, the, through them is, is pretty impressive. Um, uh, you know, they, they're, they're, they're pretty bright, considering that these binoculars have a 30mm objective, um, diameter objective lenses. You know, they, the, the brightness of them is, is, is fairly impressive. Um, you know, going back to the 30mm objective lenses, that, that puts him in the range of being a, a mid-sized binocular. You now, most mid-sizes tend to have about 32mm objective lenses. They weigh um, about 600 grams, which, um, again, compared to most standard um, mid-sized um, binoculars, is, is really competitive. Which is, in some ways, quite uh, surprising, I suppose, considering that this also has electronic equipment in it. Um, yeah, so they, they, they're no more heavier than any mid-sized binocular that you're going to get out there. Size-wise, you know, as you can see, they're fairly compact. Um, one thing I would like to mention is they are really nice and comfortable. They have a really nice feel to them and they, they feel really comfortable in your hands. Um, nicely balanced as well. So, again, yeah, I'm nicely balanced. Uh, again, it it's um, goes back to the, the use of having to use them over a long period of time. If you've got a, a really comfortable pair of binoculars that's nicely balanced, um, it adds to, um, along with the image stabilization, these are ideal for you if you're going to be looking at something, you know, um, over a long sustained period. Okay, uh, uh, otherwise compared to most binoculars, they, you know, they're fairly standard. You, you, you focus using the central focusing ring over here. Um, the diopter adjustment is on the right eyepiece, um, which is fairly standard. Um, one thing that is different is to adjust the, the distance between the eyes to fit your face. Most binoculars obviously have a, a central um, hinge over there that the whole binocular would open and close. Um, these, the individual eyepieces, move uh, further and closer away, as you can see there. Um, the eye cups, really comfortable. Um, they're just rubber eye cups. Um, you push them against your eyes, they're quite comfortable. Um, and they're soft enough that they block out any side lights to come from the sides. Um, they don't have twist up eye cups like um, many binoculars have these days. Um, but you can actually still use them if you wear glasses. They have, I think, about 14 and a half millimeters of um, eye relief. So, I mean, if you do wear glasses, all you do is just show you. Fold down the, um, the rubber eyepiece over there and you would just um, rest your glasses against the, the binocular and be able to look through um, so you, d you can use them most people with 14 and a half mils of um, eye relief would be able to use these with, with, with glasses no problem yeah so um, a nice piece of kit uh, the view for them uh, as I said was br is, is, is bright and impressive I, I compared it to my um, benchmark binoculars and it, it compares very very well um, one thing that is impressive also is the, the, the crispness of the image um, right to the edge of, of the view. Um, what you'll actually find uh, is something really that you should look for when, when choosing a pair of binoculars is on cheaper binoculars you often find that the view on the edge of the, of the view of the, as you look through the binoculars is, it becomes hazy and there is, it's quite a, uh, in some cases, the really bad cases, there is quite a, a noticeable area that is out of focus whereas the central of the view would be in focus. Um, Canon use um, field flatliner lenses on here. I, I think they, they have some, uh, they call it, uh, they are proprietary thing, a, a double flatliner lens or something. Um, but um, whatever the case, it, it, um, they're obviously doing something right because it's, it's quite nice and crisp right to the edge of the image. Um, just as a quick thing to let you know, to um, the image stabilization, the batteries, go underneath here, they just this little compartment over here. Um, 
And also to point to mention that you can actually use the binoculars without the image stabilization. So, you know, if you were to run out of batteries, for example, um, you, you can use these as standard binoculars with, without pressing the button. They, they work quite fine. Yeah, so all in all, uh, a really nice piece of kit. Um, I, I like them. I, the image stabilization is um, a nice feature to have um, on this size. Um, for the larger sizes, it's, um, it, really that's when it comes to the own, where you're not having to carry around a heavy tripod. Um, that's when they would really um, beat the competition.